Hey, how's it going? My name's Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about the question you guys seem to ask me all the time, but it doesn't really matter, and that is, what is the best truck for hotshot? So now that I've had a couple of trucks, I think I can have a somewhat better opinion on what the best truck is, and the reason I say it doesn't actually matter is because very, very few people ask me hey, what kind of TMS do you use, okay? That's transportation management software or a system. And like that right there, a, a good TMS is much more important than the truck because it's the back office, it's all that stuff that's that can like really slow you down on delivering freight and getting paid on the freight uh, versus a truck, you know? So uh, keep in mind that, you know, it's not necessarily as important to pick a good truck, it's more important to run your business well. And running your business well is not glamorous, it doesn't get any views, but it's the really, really important part real quick though let's go over what trucks I have this is an enterprise rental it's a 2021 Ram 3500 obviously dually this is also an enterprise rental it's a 2020 Ford F350 dually and this is the mega long it is a uh, 2015 Ram 3500 dually uh, limited uh, mega cab with a stretch my truck um, stretch to accommodate the eight foot bed okay so and before this I had a crew cab tradesman the silver truck which is in my older videos that I've since sold and it's making its round through the auctions <laughs> but anyways so this is the three trucks that I've had now keep in mind I I've had already multiple trucks before this right so for Rams I had the uh, what was it crypto no that wasn't that was a no that was for a Ford so I had the white Ford which I got to 75,000 miles then I got the dark like charcoal gray Ford which I got to 80,000 miles and so now this is the silver one it's at 63,000 miles and then before the on the Rams I had a 2019 Ram, which I think I called Clifford the Big Red Truck. Then I had a white Ram after that. Um, and I have to swap these out every 60 or 70,000 miles. So um, uh, basically I've now done what, six Enterprise rentals? I think so. And obviously I've had two of my own personal vehicles, like I mentioned, the silver truck and the uh, mega cab, uh, the mega long. Now, what is the best truck? You guys keep asking me this. Now, uh, really fast, I just wanna cover engines and that is gas or diesel, right? Specifically, your fuel type, I guess. Please, guys, keep in mind, getting into hotshot with the gasoline is ridiculous. It's a terrible idea. It's a bad thing to do, specifically because, first of all, yes, there's no power, no torque, all that stuff. But more importantly, guys, think about the thing, like, do truck stops usually have gasoline at the places where you can fit with your trailer? No, they don't. So you're always gonna find yourself going through the like, you know, car islands. And it's just, that's gonna be a recipe for hitting something. It's really tight over there. And so you're just gonna deal with all this frustration. Um, I'm, I would never recommend a gas. That's just like maybe as a starting point in RV transport, maybe. But in reality, guys, just get a diesel. Trust me, I know the I know the emission stuff and all this other, like I know the systems are a little more complicated and it's more expensive. I get all of that. A gas is easier to work. I get all of it. But, but tell, when have you ever seen a semi truck as a gas? Never, exactly. I, maybe, were there gas semi trucks? I don't think so. <laughs> so get yourself a diesel until electric uh, trucks come out and then you just get electric trucks. Uh, but anyway, so that's the <laughs> engine, right? So diesel for sure. Now, I also want to say that guys, I still strongly encourage and recommend Enterprise Rentals. It's a 22 cent a mile or something like that. Um, I, I, think, I think I got an email, their prices went up. So don't quote me on the 22 cents, but uh, so it's, it's right around there that it's the Enterprise Rental, every 6,000 miles they give you a new truck. I still strongly recommend the Enterprise Rental. I cannot stress enough how important Enterprise is to my business and how much I need it. And I'm glad I have it because the alternative is, uh, and this is why we got to get into buying which truck should you buy uh, for hotshot is because the alternative is you're gonna have to do your own maintenance right that's the only way you can make it in hotshot or in RV transport is if you're mechanically inclined and you're willing to do your own maintenance because right when you stop doing your own maintenance like I just took the mega long to the shop it was a $10,000 bill okay now obviously $3,600 were tires, so that's like technically $7,000 bill, and $2,000 was actually the emissions, so it's technically like a $5,000 bill. But the point remains the same. I just had to drop 10 stacks on this truck, so uh, a video to come about that. But anyways, so which truck is best, okay? Nitty gritty, uh, and I'm gonna say it, okay? And you might not like it, but I'm gonna say it. Do you see a Chevy over here? Is that a Chevy? Is that a Chevy? Is that a Chevy? Do you see a GMC? Is that, no, you don't. 
You know why? Because GM sucks. Chevy sucks. GMC sucks. I'm saying it. I don't care. It might piss off a couple of people, but I'm telling you, GM's trash, okay? Now, you might be, Alex, that's just an opinion. It's a strong opinion. And you're right. It is an opinion. Here's the thing. I'm not getting, I'm not making that opinion without nothing, without no data, no information, right? TFL, um, TFL Truck specifically, they did. They do a, the world's toughest towing test on the big three, right? Ram, G, uh, GM, and Ford. And when they did with the Chevy, first of all, let's establish the thing. The starting price on Chevys are usually more expensive. When have you ever seen a Chevy work truck? I don't know, uh, probably never. But the main thing is when they did that TFL towing test, and I'll make sure to try to link the video. When they did that, the Ford had less brake applications than the GM, and they used the same 10 speed. And the, it's not like uh, it's not like the Chevy had a uh, exhaust brake or something. And so uh, it had less, it, had, it was slower up the hill and it had more brake applications down the hill. So the Ford already has a bad engine brake. Can you imagine if it's even worse because you get a Chevy? Now, I don't know about, <laughs> I don't know about Chevys, about the older ones, but definitely don't get any with the 10 speed. So but now for the older ones, I don't know guys, a V8 diesel, ultimately is the same thing right the ford has a v8 diesel right it's just harder to work on there's less room under the hood it's more complicated there's more hoses so it seems like they're more prone to air and at the end of the day the most important thing in hotshot is downtime and mechanical repairs so if you can avoid those two things with an enterprise rental and an inline diesel then why not <laughs> but, but, but anyways okay so no gms right i don't recommend gms now let's say you're looking at a ford i'm going to tell you guys don't get a ford <laughs> Sorry, I, I like this Ford. I like the 10 speed. I like, uh, I'm gonna do a full review. It has like 63,000 miles on it and I'll do a review on it, but I, I cannot recommend a Ford enough because to my understanding, the only good Ford was a 7.3. That was the only reliable one. 6.0, that's problematic. 6.4, even worse than the 6.0. And the first couple years of the 6.7, that's like 14 or 15 or 16 right in there, were all so bad. So in reality, the only reliable Fords are the like 17, 18, 19, right? And don't get any, don't get a 2020. I'm gonna make a video about that. Don't get a 2020 because it's way too many problems. And, but so 17, 18, 19, but the problem remains the same, that it's a V8 configuration where on a Ford, you're gonna have to remove the cab. It's harder to service. So uh, I, I can't recommend a Ford. Now, what do I recommend then? Uh, so I recommend if you are thinking about, get, about getting into hot shot, in the hot shot business and you want to get a truck, okay? Do exactly what I did, okay? When I was shopping for this truck, there was a lot of trucks available. There was 11, 12, 13s, 14s available, all with the mega cab long bed stretch. What did I get? I got a 15. Now, I wouldn't mind getting a newer truck, but the problem was there wasn't any 16s or 17s or 18s that I could see in the Facebook group, Mega Cab Long Bed Facebook group. That's where I bought it from. That's where I saw this one. So there wasn't any of those available with a dually, right? That's what I wanted a dually. So ultimately, guys, the three best year of Ram is the 15 through 18 ram uh 3500 and you have and the reason i say 15 through 18 is a couple things number one those three years four okay well we can wind we'll go back 14 has the dual radiator problem which is like you know obviously i know it's just a plastic white pipe that you could replace but still it's always going to be an issue plus 14s don't have an ison or they're very hard to find with an a ison or as69 rc transmission so um so de definitely don't get a 14 and then uh 13 definitely doesn't have an as69 rc transmission so that's useless and you could get a 68 rfe but guys I, my other truck 498,000 miles guys that truck had not this one this one has like over 100 now but that truck with 498,000 miles was an all original transmission um, i only did fluid and filters 498,000 miles on the transmission and that's impressive and so ram got the drivetrain correct on those three years cummins ison and you can do 4x4 if you want but so that's that's what I recommend. 15 through 18 Ram 3500 Cummins Ison, okay? Uh, basically, just like what I got. You see this? This is a 2015, and so that's why those are the three best years. Now that's not to say you can't make it with a different truck if you get it, guys. You can, but at the end of the day, the, like the 15 through 18 Ram Cummins Ison combo, it's one of the most like reliable drivetrains. Yes, there's electrical problems. Yes, I've had to replace my heater already a couple times, but you, when your heater breaks or your electrical breaks, that doesn't leave you stranded on the road. You know what does? A 6.0, that'll leave you stranded on the road. You know what else does? A CP4, which all the 2020s have. You know what else does? A freaking 10 speed transmission. That thing will leave you stranded on the road, okay? So definitely just careful um, with just, you know, just careful. And 
two, I want to, the overarching theme, guys, I want to stress it again, is the Enterprise rental is really that good. I realize it's expensive. Think about it, right? If you're going to spend 10,000 miles, uh, if you're going to do 10,000 miles a month, it's 20, uh, 22 or 23 cents a mile. I, I, I have to get the current pricing. Uh, I'd have to pull it up on the email, but I'm <laughs> right in the middle of recording. So, uh, but keep in mind, so if you do 10,000 miles on an Enterprise rental, that's 2,300 bucks. Now, yes, you could say, oh, I'll just take the same money and you set it aside. If you're that disciplined, then go ahead. Don't get an enterprise rental and let that money, 22 or 23 cents a mile, let that be your maintenance fund. The problem is something always comes up. And after four months of being on the road, you're going to have, let's say you let's say you do four months on the road, you do 40,000 miles and you're going to have now uh, 23 times four. You're going to have $10,000 in your account, right? Close to it, right? You're going to have $10,000 in your maintenance fund. You're going to be like, oh, I'm balling, bro. I got 10 grand. I'm going to go get new wheels. I'm going to go take a week off or a month off. And then right when you hit the road the second time or the next time your truck breaks down and you just spent your maintenance fund. So if you are disciplined enough to do that and you know yourself, fine. Just take that same amount of money and set it aside for your maintenance fund. The problem is uh, most Americans, I think, what's the quote? What's the statistic? Most Americans don't have $500 for an emergency fund. So I really don't think most of you watching me are disciplined enough. And I know from my own self because I wasn't disciplined enough. So take it from me with a little bit of experience. The Enterprise Rental, it forces you to be disciplined because they call you up once a month and they take your money regardless. <laughs> so there you go. That's that. It's settled. Okay. The best truck for Hot Shot is 15 to 18 Ram 3500 Cummins Ison. Don't get Fords. Don't get Chevys. Um, don't get new Rams with the CP4 or if you do go buy a new Ram make sure it's a 2021 because that has the CP3 which seems to be a little bit better um, so 2021 Ram Cummins Ison or 15 through 18 Cummins Ison or just get an Enterprise rental and you can have this nice awesome Ford that gets really good MPG guys I'm I'm so impressed with the MPG on the Ford okay that's gonna be of the Ford video it's just oh it's so impressive but that 10 speed is silly unreliable silly unreliable um, I'm pretty sure this one's on its way out, but it's 63,000 miles and Enterprise wants it back. So yeah, anyways, that's going to be in the Ford review video. So that's going to do it for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Am I wrong? Am I right? Let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.